But the important thing is what you take away from it. When I was young, my parents took me to a party. It was a very nice party. But I saw them in the corner, and they lit up a cigarette. I strolled over and I said, Dad, Dad, is that good for you? And he looked down at me, because I would ask an adult these questions all the time. But he looked down at me, and with an unqualified, unverified answer, he said, Son, everything in moderation. Ooh. I wasn't so enamored with that answer. I thought about it for a little while, and I said, okay, smoking is okay in moderation. How about drinking in moderation? Hmm, maybe. How about pollution in moderation? What about cyanide? Well, <laughs> at least just once. <laughs> what about a moderate heart attack or a moderate stroke? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if you didn't look at the signs and you listened to the talking heads, you might believe that everything in moderation is okay, just okay. I mean, think about it. When you were young, what did you hear? Right? What did you hear? Everything. Cartoons. Remember that? Mm. And I was little. <laughs> Look, you trusted physician. Smoking is okay. It's okay. My heroes, John Wayne, smoking camels. It's okay until he died of lung cancer. The government and smoking. How many movies have you seen where the person's lying on the ground shot? And what's the last thing they say? You want a cigarette? What happens when they put you up in front of a fire squad? What do they give you? Blindfold. A cigarette. <laughs> you can even get a mate by blowing, blowing smoke in her face. Only can. Even Santa Claus was on board with smoking. The red pack of Pall Mall with Santa Claus. Now, really, smoking. Even the American Medical Association says smoking in moderation doesn't appreciably take away from your life. <laughs> now, if you didn't look at the signs, or even if you do look at the signs, you'll find out that, I mean, how do you really get away with this? But the science is saying, and the statistics are saying, that about 500,000 people in the United States die from smoking annually. 1.8 million people in Japan die from smoking. There's about 7 million people worldwide that will die from smoking. Okay? Obviously, the science is out there, but nobody was really looking at it. There was evidence, there was evidence, but nobody took a look. How does the big tobacco company actually get away with this? Well, big tobacco used what we call doubt. Matter of fact, it was the corporation of doubt. 
as long as they were saying that in the face of mounting damning evidence, they just created doubt. And just a little bit of doubt was enough to keep people hooked. But I didn't really come here tonight to tell you about smoking. You're all intelligent people. You knew about smoking for years. So if you can believe that 50 years ago you could have a bad habit of smoking, then what move ahead 65 years to today. Can you believe somebody having a bad habit of not eating correctly. As a matter of fact, bad nutrition kills about 700,000 people per year. Now, you could ask your doctor in between bites, as they eat because the doctors are eating just as much, and see if this bad habit is something that is something you're going to fall into, how did we get to this point? The same company that provided the information about smoking the misinformation, the conflicting evidence, the hidden negative data is the same company today that provides the same information for eating. Explain. Now, who funds Explain? Well, it's the meat packers union, it's the dairy, it's the poultry, it's the confection and sugar industries. That's who backs them. Now, there is a number of doctors that are out there that protest this. I love Dr. Kim Williams. He's the head of cardiology, College of Cardiology. And he goes, there's two types of cardiologists. The first is a vegan. And the second is those who don't read the data. So who do you want to work on you? Dr. Kim Williams also says, thought this was very nice, that I, I don't mind dying. I just don't want it to be my fault. So is there a way to change it? Now, I know all of you are going to say, hey, my dad had it. My mom had cardiovascular disease. It is in the genes. Well, here's something that you have to know. Genetics loads the gun, lifestyle pulls the trigger. You may be perceptible, you may be, you may be able to get high cholesterol. However, if you don't eat those foods, you may never. Now, there's two paths you can go down in your life. The first path is you know, that of not eating well, that nutrition. But I don't want you to wait for society to catch up like it took the 50, 60, 70 years from smoking for the evidence to come out and for you to read that evidence. It's your responsibility to take care of yourself, to take care of your children. You may get to the point in life, in your hopefully ripe, ripe old age, to where, <laughs> to where you may pass. And here's the action I'm going to put in front of you. Here's what I want you to do. When you die, and you get up to those pearly gates, and St. Peter says, what took you so long to get here? 
I just want you to put on that something eating grin and <laughs> smile and say something. fruits and vegetables. Mm. <laughs>